Good evening and welcome to the Town of Poughkeepsie September 2021 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. If you'd all please arise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, I'm going to do a roll call. <clears throat> Diane. Here. Okay. Uh, Present. Tony B. Here. Mary. Hello. Here. Larry. <laughs> Christine. Here. Okay, Art. Here. Phyllis. Here. Uh, Simone. Here. Uh, Tony S. is not here. And unless uh, there's a recusal, unfortunately, you will not be a voting member tonight, but you're certainly welcome to ask any questions. Okay, and <clears throat> based upon uh, recent events, this is a hybrid meeting. People are uh, welcome to come in in person or they can zoom in. Everyone's available uh, to zoom in based upon the information on the town website. And we've complied with all uh, requirements for a public meeting. And now we're ready to begin. <clears throat> so uh, the first business is a steward shop, 2245 South Road. There's a request to adjourn that until October 18th. I would entertain that motion. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. So. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next is number two, Poughkeepsie United Methodist Church, 2381 New Hackensack Road. Is there someone available for that application? I don't, I don't see or hear any response to that one. We'll return to that one. The next is number three, uh, 3532 North Road. Is there someone here for that application? Right, I, I don't see or hear any response to that one, so we'll return to that one. Next is number four, 48 Treetop Lane. Is there someone here for that application? Yes. Okay, you state your name? Uh, Dimitri Berenson, I'm an owner. Okay. Dimitri, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes. All right, why don't you describe what you want to do? As far as I understand, that's been already reviewed several times. So we were planning to expand our wraparound porch with some enclosed structure there. Okay, and my recollection was from the last time you were here that it's it's essentially the it's going in the same position as the previous structure. That is correct. Sir. Okay, and it's just going to be a little higher and enclosed. It was, it was going to be enclosed, yes, a little higher. Okay. And my recollection from visiting that is that you're pretty well surrounded by vegetation and pretty far from any other neighbors in that corner of your house? Uh, probably at least 100, uh, 100 feet from the closest structure. Okay. Then I don't have any further questions. Christine? No questions. Art? No questions. Phyllis? No questions. Tony? No questions. Simona? No questions. Diane? No questions. Larry? No questions. All right. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to comment on this application? If you're on the Zoom, you may uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand on the Zoom and we'll call on you. And I do want to remind folks to mute themselves if they can when they're not, when it's not their turn. Thanks. You can close those blinds if you, if you, instead of being blind, you can close the blinds if you like. All right, I don't see anyone or hear any response to this. So I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. I'm sorry, what, uh, what's the decision then? Uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> For those of you unfamiliar with the 
um, procedure for the work uh, for the zoning board of appeals. Each applicant describes their application. We ask questions. The public has an, has an opportunity to provide any comments or input. When we close the public hearing, at the end of each of the applications, so there'll be a, a time when we deliberate on each of the applications. Um, at that time, we'll have a, a determination about whether the variance is granted or denied. And you can either wait until the end of the meeting or you can check with the zoning administrator in the morning. Wonderful. Understood now. Thank you, sir. Okay. That brings us to item number five, 12 Field Court. Is there someone here for that application? Good evening, Eric Gustavo. Mr. Castaldo, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? I do, and yes, ma'am. All right, why don't you describe what's going on? How are you? Uh, we're a real estate investor and contractor in town of Um I bought this property a few months ago. Um, renovated the house with uh, permits with Bruce Flowers. Uh, the porch itself was not found on record. We did not create, nor did we build this little porch that's 12 by 11. It was existing for many years of the previous homeowner who put the addition on. Uh, what we did was there was a holes in the, in the roof. So we put a new roof on architectural shingles and we also sided the outside of it to match the siding uh, that we sided the house. Um, we also put down an outdoor carpet and we rescreened the existing porch um, so that's my first time doing this but this is uh, what was needed to uh, try to get the variance uh, granted uh, so that the current homeowner can uh, enjoy the existing porch all right and has the building inspector been out to inspect all the things that you did yes sir Bruce flowers did yes all right and did he have any objection to or any concerns about at least that porch no sir Okay, then those are all the questions I have. Christine? Thank you. No questions. All right. No questions. Phyllis? No questions. Tony? No questions. Simona? No questions. Diane? No questions. Larry? No questions. All right. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this application? All right. I don't, I don't see any response or any indication that anyone wants to comment. And so then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are, there any, are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Thank you, sir, and thank you, everyone. So with that said, I can hang up now, and then tomorrow I can call for the decision. Is that correct? That is correct, or you can stay for the titillating activities of our deliberation. And how long does that take, sir, approximately? It will take at least one hour and eight minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to call in the morning. Very well. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Next, brings, that brings us to item number six, six Donny Drive. Is there someone here from that application? Yay. All right, come on up. <coughs> you sit down right in the chair there. The microphones are live. We've got to turn them on. All right, why don't you state your name? Jim Orfis. Mr. Orfis, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. All right, why don't you just describe your application? Okay, well, when I bought the house 36 years ago, there was a, an existing permit for an 8 by 6 shed, um, which was stated to be 8 feet from the neighbor's fence, which is totally incorrect. There was no room for it. Okay, um, years later, that... That shed, I think it was tin, collapsed, and I put up a new one, okay? Then years after that, I extended it. So now we have a big shed, 17 feet, four inches, um, and not at all eight feet from the neighbor's yard. Um, and I wish for it to be approved. Um, okay, and it, it's right on the property line or within a foot of the property line? N well, no, it's a couple of feet, a foot and a half, something like that. <clears throat> There's, there's a gap there. Okay. Would you say it's shed is one foot four inches? Okay. All right. Um, that may I state why I want it in particular? I mean, we're moving. I really don't care, but I'm leaving a lot of stuff for the next owner. I mean, a lot of stuff, 
because we're going to my son's house and I won't be doing anything. But um, I'll have to put down a couple of um, tarps and then cover the stuff with tarps. And um, the individual, if you disallow this, won't, won't have any sheds on the property. And he's going to need one sooner or later. So I just figure it's, it, um, you can expedite things and make it easier for me just to okay it now. Okay. And, in fact, there is another shed in the backyard? No, that's going. Well, that, that's a monstrosity. The 20 by, 20 by 8, that's, I'm not looking to have that approved. Okay. So if we, as a, if we were to grant this variance... Um, and made it as condition that you remove the other shed, that's not a problem, correct? Uh, if you, I will remove the other shed because I want to have a total CO on my property. Okay. But I can't do that without the variance being granted. So I'm a juggling two different things over here. Right, so my, my, I want to make sure that you don't have any problem if we made it as a condition to granting this variance that you actually do remove the other shed. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't know the time frame for that. It's going to be way before I go in the contract, but I would like to have everything up, open and above board now. Okay. So, yes. All right. Then, Christine? So, this shed that, this, the shed that you want to leave there, there has been a shed in that location for many years, even though it's not the original one. It preceded me in 1985. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. All right. No questions. Phyllis? I have no questions. Tony? No questions. <laughs> Diane? No questions. Larry? No questions. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this application? Is Martin's iPhone doing something? I don't know. A uh, person with Martin's iPhone, are you intending to uh, comment on this application? I'm sorry, Ma Michael, it's Martin. I just uh, tuned oh. in. Oh, okay. Your application, are you on? No, nope, Are you on the, uh, hours yet? No, we'll be coming back to yours, so we're on Donnie Drive. So, uh, all right. If you could. No, I uh, apologize. I'm all good. Okay. <coughs> all right. Well, hearing or seeing no one or hearing anyone uh, interested in uh, commenting on this application, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that, that motion carries. Thank that you. brings us to item number seven, 60 Van Wagner Road. Is there anyone here for that application? Oh, come on up. Have a seat. Uh, state your name. My name is Glenn Smith. Mr. Uh, Smith, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. All right. Why don't you describe your application? Yeah. I have uh, a request to put a carport on my uh, property that that is actually it's an additional property that I had purchased after a house burned down on it a good many years ago the property is only like 28 feet wide and it goes <coughs> back in the back and i wish to uh, uh have this uh, carport remain i don't know if you have any pictures of what i sent with what it looked we had like. that and i think everyone's been out to the property to visit it okay yeah <laughs> but um, uh, when, we, when we were out there there was some indication that again that you're saying that you have two lots right um dutchess county parcel access only has it as one lot do you have some information yes, that there are actually two? Do you want me to bring it up? I would you? like that. Okay, this is the lot. And this is my regular property. Technically, that would have been 58 Van Wagner Road, and this is 60, and then it was 56 next door to me, my neighbor. All right, so you've shown me two statement of county town taxes. One is for parcel ID 907970. Um, you can go back and have a, have a seat again. Oh, okay. And another one from 
908976. So it, it does appear that there are this lot here, which is his house, mm -hmm. but there is another lot here. I think these are actually just not in the right proper position because it's a tax map. But that could that could make sense. This is more, right? Um, if, if that's accurate, then I, I think that he would need two side yard variances. Chrissy? Um, I'm sorry, so the other parcel number was 907970? Yes. So that's just to... Just to the south, immediately adjacent. Actually, the lines are actually off. The lot, the property line is actually right, yeah, right, right on my house. Yeah, <laughs> we don't really rely on that. Yeah. No, I've I put this up. I put it up. I um, had I had presumed that it was you know it wasn't a stationary piece of property, so it wouldn't um, require any you know. Um, permits or variances. It's just one of those uh, metal, you know, portable. Well, you've probably seen it. Right. That could be yeah, moved I'd, if under necessary. Under our code, though, we still um, characterize that as an accessory I, structure. I found know. yes that out later to my, and basically I've checked with my neighbors. They're all happy with it. My next door neighbor, in fact, if you saw, he just built a new fence along the sideline, which I even allowed him a couple feet of my property to put the fence on. And basically, the fence, the line across there is only basically 28 feet across. A uh, little over a year ago, I had triple bypass heart surgery. And right now, in that spot, it's convenient for me in the winter and stuff, you know, so I don't have to, you know, do any uh, snow plowing or anything in it because it's right, it's right close where I can easily get to it. All right, the concern is that it was advertised as being in the front yard and you needed one side yard variance. Based upon the information that you presented today that this is actually on a different piece of property, it, it actually it looks like you need two side yard variances to fit in there. So I think it has to be re-advertised. So I have to go through everything that I did for this one all over again? Um, well, you would, you would just have to come back to the, I don't have to meeting. put on another hundred dollars. No, or no, another. no. I just have a question. What sure. else is on the the nine zero seven nine seven zero parcel? Uh, there is a uh, a swimming pool right. It, it's been there for you right on the corner. It, it actually straddles both properties. Uh, but mainly that is it. Um, the house, the foundation used to be along right along where the fence in fact i own like three feet over on this the property next doors they've got like concrete steps and the houses were so close together i used to be able when i was a kid look from my window into my neighbors that's how close they were at that time so and that's um where the property like like i say at the widest point basically it was only 28 feet wide there when there was a you know foundation for a house there if you look at the house next door they were like right in line with with that house and it actually came right in in on that property i had recently filled in the foundation but the foundation for the old house is still down in the ground you know what's the chance that you have a survey of the property god i i don't know i mean i at this point i mean I'm just trying to look for something simple. I like I right, say, we just want to make sure that if we years old. I tried to, you know, when my dad first bought it, he bought the house basically when I was five years old, and um, we've never really had any, you know, surveys or anything done on it. I know the neighbor next door when they built the apartments, they couldn't put a driveway in, so my father gave them a couple extra feet on that side of our property so they could do that as well. So, I mean, we usually get along pretty much with all my neighbors. In fact, all of them, 
were very happy with it. You know, when I taught the my neighbor next door, he he was you know fine with it across the street. You know, so as far as everybody goes, I just want to make sure that if we grant something that it's it's that it works for you and it's not that it's correct. Well, it, it works for me. It's <laughs> correct. If I try to put it any like if I try to bring it down, like further alongside the house that means it would be right against my house and I would have to uh, fill in there which means my grade would be higher than the guy's grade next door to me his his yard goes down in there I would have to uh, and if I put it anywhere else you can see I don't really have any access this was the most accessible point that I had on the whole property you know to be able to put it Okay, so <clears throat> just to be clear, I think where we're at now is that you're we're gonna you have to make a new application that we re-advertise because you're gonna need something in it. You don't need a variance because it's in the front yard because it's not in front of a house any longer. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna need an additional side yard variance, so it's gonna have to be re-advertised, and we won't be able to vote on it tonight. Where is the side yard? Um, well, you have two sides, right, to the property. Paul, there may be a problem with um, not having a principal structure on the parcel. Um, okay. So we might have to look into that. Um, cause yeah, there is no structure there's there. There's no principal structure, so I don't believe you can have an accessory structure on a parcel without a principal structure. Lisa, okay. do you have anything on that? Pardon me? I know that we have allowed, for example, parking lots on a properties when they were associated with the, a principal lot on another. Okay. And technically, I think parking lots are an accessory structure. Okay. Since we can't do anything tonight, let's have a discussion after this meeting and figure out what, if anything, we can do for this applicant. And we can take it offline and talk with him and um, with staff and figure out where we go from here. Okay. I mean, if you notice, these cars are like my collect you know that's my so very nice but we want to be able passion. to legally you know, grant you what you're looking for i wish i very w i hope you can i mean it's been a rough year for me with covid and with triple okay. bypass and everything it's just it's all right just so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask if there's anyone in the public that wishes to comment on this while we're here today but then i'm gonna make a motion to adjourn it at least one month so we can figure out what we're gonna do all right so if there's anyone in the public that wishes to comment on this application. Anyone on the Zoom who wishes to comment on this? I see somebody on a cell phone that keeps lighting up, 203. Are you wanting to comment on this? No, I was calling in for the um, AAA application. OK. All right, so just hold on then, please. And I'm going to mute you in the meantime. Sure. All right, and I apologize. Is there anybody on the board that wants to ask any questions now? Okay. Um, Sonia, can you make copies of these? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn this to be October, is it 18th? 18th? 18th. Second. Is there anything I have to do on my part, or is just I think come we'll, we're going to gonna reach up. out to you to see how we can what what has to be done. I think that's that's what's going to happen. Yeah, so you'll okay, hear from Chrissy probably. Yeah, do you want him today? No, no, no. 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 Okay. We're not going to be okay. able to take care of your problem tonight. Okay. Okay. We're not going to be able. To, you don't have to take it down tonight, but we're not oh. going to be able to grant what you're asking for. It seems like tonight. what they did, they just eliminated. 58 and just called it 60 and 56. That's know? apparently what happened. That's what I yeah, think they've done with it. They yeah. just made it one property, basically, I think is what they did. Yeah, and parcel access is very tricky sometimes. It's, this is pretty bad. Um, so there was a motion and a seconded, no discussion. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? OK, then that, that carries. Right. And then uh, Sonia's going to come back with your two pieces of uh, paper in a minute. She's just making a photocopy so we have it for the file. And then we'll give that back to you in a minute. Okay, okay. sure. And then, Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> that brings us to item number eight, 10 Cardinal Drive.
Okay, if you want to state your names. Donna DeMarco. And Gerald DeMarco. Mr. and Mrs. DeMarco, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. And what's your, what's this application? So, uh, my name is Jerry DeMarco and Donna DeMarco. Our family's been at this residence for over 30 years. Um, we were here a little while ago. Um, what we did is we um, applied for a permit. We incorrectly filled out the permit. We didn't realize that until Christy actually explained it the last time she was at the house, what we did. Our drawing was a little bit off. Um, after we thought we had a permit, then we had the fence put in. We didn't do that prior, just for clarity. Um, after we went through the zoning uh, meeting and we were denied, we were confused. We still didn't understand what was the next approach we should do. So um, after a lot of work trying to understand it, Christy came out and we walked through the whole property, laid out everything on where we were, and the option of potentially moving the fence up a little bit, uh, going back to the original area where the fence was, is there is footings down there still from where they cut away the old fence. So um, we're trying to um, work in line with the zoning team to try, you know, if that's permissible to move it um, just inside of the tree line. Um, it, there is a financial burden. And we understand that that's, it will be another $3,000 to move that fence again. Um, but if we only have to move it one time, there's 3,000, but if we have to take it down, move it again, that would be in excess of 6,000. So um, we've submit with the help of the zoning department, which we really appreciate. Uh, we recognize that the first thing was in our air. Um, so we're trying to um, get to some means where we can move it inside of that realm, which was denied the first time. Trying to do it late. Right, we're trying to do it late. My wife has been, this has been a very uh, difficult time for the family. Um, it's taken up a lot of our uh, resources to try and understand. Again, this was new to us on how to approach this and how to do this. We did try to do all the legitimate stuff by not putting up a fan. Right on the permit, our wording was right, but the drawing, the was, drawing was wrong. Right. We and we fully disclosed that we were we putting a 16 and 30, you know, for a total of 46 inch foot fence but along that. But it was off. It's still the way the corner wraps around. It's it's very deceiving against the drawing. But what we did was because we were so nervous about filling out this permit wrong when I called and they said you didn't do anything that you said you were going to do I was a mess and I said well then what do I do and they said call for a variance do the variance so I had an engineer come to my home for two hours to make sure that this variance was filled out right so that's why if there's a discrepancy against the permit to the variance that's why we wanted to make sure that we did everything the proper way and again we didn't and because even the denied. even the satellite version when we walk the property doesn't really truly show the property line and how it lays out against the roadways. Um, so until you actually walk the property and we could actually we we took the measurements again ourselves um, three or four times to make sure it was right. So we believe we have it correct. We believe our drawing that we've submitted is correct. There is tree lines there. There are ma massive trunks underneath the tree line um, that we're going to fence. We had the fence company come back out. They're going to try and keep that as a straight line fence there. But until they drop those footings, they said, you know, it might be off within six inches or so, depending on where the roots are. Um, so, and we tried to take pictures also of that property just in case somebody wants to see where those trees were. Um, you took pictures of the tree stumps? Yeah, I took pictures yeah. <laughs> of the tree stumps. And it, just for where that fence was, where we put it the first time, was just because of the actual trees and line with it. So those trees didn't, there's three very um, senior trees there that are pretty. But, you know, if 
need be and we had to have you know somebody come and cut those down too you know this property had expanded area is really because we we lost our two dogs there are a number of members of our family and we went out and got you know wanted to get two new puppies but there's just was not enough area for them to roam and that's the reason why we really moved the fence in the first place is so the dogs could have more um, area to just roam safely uh, in our back yard they like it they, and they do like it they do like yeah. it so, but they're willing to move that in again if that's the decision <coughs> by the, uh, for the approval, if we will, of the zoning board. We so apologize for the you know the the entire confusion. We we recognize now after we've seen the drawing, we did not understand at the last zoning meeting what the confusion was. We truly didn't until we seen the drawing again. We, we just didn't understand it so. okay so as I tried to explain the last time the code prohibits six f fences more than three and a half feet in front yards correct and you have a corner lot so it has technically two front yards I'll, uh, I'll mute them hold on <laughs> and so the code is there to prevent two problems one is that corner lots that have six foot fences can impede traffic sites Correct. that's not a problem in your case thank you okay the other problem with the, that the code is trying to avoid is um, a compounding effect effect so that the properties don't turn into just big walled compounds which Correct. is what your current fence situation is okay so there are two ways around that one is that you can move it way far back to more than 30 feet from the property line or um, you can change the style of fence so that it's more open so that it's not doesn't look like a compound it's it's just a fence yard that would allow you to keep your dogs and give them enough room to roam so the fence um, structure was put up by a fence company who's done all the other fences in the same development in the area mm -hmm. and we have images of many of our neighbors who have the ex I mean it's the exact same style fence mm -hmm. uh, on their exact same style corner lot so you know is it an architectural thing that it's because th those people still have I mean the fence guy presented it to us that mm -hmm. style fence because he took us to our neighbors houses to show them how that looked and how they were able to present their houses and matter of fact one of our neighbors houses is identical to our layout our corner lot so we have images of I don't know if you were able to no we all went we all went through the neighborhood so and there are a lot of white vinyl fences in the neighborhood right the problem though is that that your the way it is now it looks like a compound which is what the code is trying to prevent so there's actually three ways to get around that. One is you can put a, have a fence all around your property, but it can only be three and a half feet. That would comport with the code. Or you can move it back significantly so it comports with the code and still keep the white vinyl fence or whatever type of fence you want. Or I think that if you had a more open style of fence, it wouldn't have that, it wouldn't look like a compound. It wouldn't look like you're a walled area. So this house has got the exact same fence, the exact same corner lot. And okay. I mean, that is the fence guys who put it in. And I, I don't know if you had seen, did you guys see this house? Well, why don't you tell me what number, what, how, what address that is? That's the one right across oh, that's from the school. Nassau and Ricky. I, and why don't you get a little closer to the mic? Nassau, Nassau and, and Ricky. Ricky. So I, I can bring it's you right the images. It's right across the street from the school, Nassau School. I mean, Actually, there's two of them. Right. They're, they're like side by side. And the, the one right on Southgate also has the exact same style. Ha All right. Fence. And do you know how long those have been there? It, um, this, this one's one. just put up within the last, I would say, a year, two years. Yeah. Not even. And this one probably the same. And, it, and if, you could, if you could describe what you're referring to so the record's clear about what, what you're showing everybody. So we're showing an image of a house. It's a corner lot. Uh, both these houses have our corner lots, and it's 
to facing the house to the side right and along that road, except their streets are actually more of a major street because it has a double yellow line. You have to just give the address so the record's clear. It's on the corner of Ricky and Nassau. And this one's on the corner of Southgate. This is 10? Is this 10 on Southgate? I don't know the numbers exactly. So can I approach to show? Sure. But you had to tell me what 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 the address is. I don't know the exact address. It's one oh, is Okay, so you just show me a picture of a house that has a has a fence. And this is on Southgate. So this is the exact same style of fence as ours. All right, so I'm going to mark this, this for the record as A mm -hmm. and you're saying that's Southgate, that's right? That's on Southgate. the list of 21 houses that have that type of whether it be vinyl or wood gated fences 98 south gate and 12 and 10 nassau drive nassau road so which one is 12 and which is 10 of these So is it 12 or 10 now? So I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm going to mark mean, these two. Depending on how you're going down the street, I mean, I guess I could, you know, figure it out. But well, I, don't I, I want it to be clear. You 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 want to rely on this, mm -hmm. but I want to make sure that it's accurate. Okay. So I'm going to mark them B and C, and it's Nassau Road. Yeah. They both corner Nassau and Ricky. R I C K Y. Nassau and Ricky. Nassau runs this. R I C K Y. Yes. Nassau runs this way. Ricky runs this way, and they're right on the corners. I'm looking to see if there's more. Picture. Another picture. Yeah. Another picture. Yeah. So that's what you would rely on. That there are other houses. Yes. Yeah. All right. Then I don't, and, I don't have I any other questions. The same stockade type of vinyl fence, you know, to our the neighbors behind us, the neighbors across the street. Um, but in that scenario, that that is actually a corner lot house that has both of those houses on the corners have the exact same stockade vinyl fence. It's and. And we have two Rottweilers. So, they you know, can't so we want something that's nobody can see through. And it's easy to clean, low maintenance. You know, that's more or less why we went with this fence. Because it's low maintenance, it's kept clean easily, and my dogs have some place to run and it's safe for them. Okay, that's all I have. Christine? Where did you originally intend to put the fence? Right, right, right where, where it is. Right, right where it was. So when in, we in did the, place, the in the place that you're that you're requesting now or where it no. is right now? Where it is right now is where we requested to have it originally. Right. But Sixteen feet feet away from six total forty six feet, feet from away the from the house into that corner. The right. original fence was sixteen feet and we are doing thirty feet of additional fence. That's what the permit said. It did not show onto the corner correctly. That was yeah. What they but did, Christine. And now you're, now you're intending for it to go inside of that yeah. great big tree. Yeah, we'd have We're to, trying to. to take I mean, it down. We'd have to there's move three, it. There are three huge trees, right, and a tree stump. So we're trying to work around that 
and to still keep somewhat of a side yard and keep it as a backyard. Um, wh Excellent. What they did, Christine, was they, they measured out from the side of their house. They, they put all the measurements, and then they just kind of drew a straight line going back. Yeah. Um, and then when they came into me, I drew, I was like, okay, it has to be 30 feet, and I wrote that on the original. It's not, I don't know if you still have the original with the I have, with your I last have packet. Yeah. I have this one. Okay, yeah, that's the, the newer one. But the original, um, you know, I drew on it 30 feet back, and then up in the corner there, I had mm -hmm. I allowed 25 feet. And, um, you know, they were like, yes, we'll do that. But, I mean, can I? Yeah. They kind of, question? yeah, it was. I mean, and it was always a six foot. Right. But, I mean, you're just opposed of how the fence looks to you, right? So. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, you're trying to avoid the. Uh, I'm trying to avoid it being fenced in compound. Right. So there's three ways to avoid that. No, I, I understand that. Okay. But, it, but is that, in, I mean, just correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you think that's a matter of opinion? Nope. No, it's a matter of law. It's a federal law? It's a matter of zoning law. Well, that's what I'm asking you. I mean, everybody else in this neighborhood, I mean, we were, <coughs> like. We copied the other fences. Well, it's not just that we copied right? it. We were trying to do something so it was a low maintenance and keep our dogs in, something that looked nice. We thought that it looked nice. I have another question, yes. if I may. Sure. You said that there was another fence there before this yes, one? Yes, in closer. closer to the house. Right. How, six where, feet high. Six it feet was six feet high, but it was closer to the house. Yes. It was 16 yeah. feet out, 16 feet from that corner of the house, straight on back. It's an old okay. And right. that, so that would have been the 30 feet that's required right. from yeah. the that yeah. would, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's it exactly. Right. And so that's why we went to try. First, we. When the fence guy came in, we said, well, what do we do? He said, well, go for a permit. And when we got you know, the permit, he said, then you don't have to worry about it. And then when we realized our permit was wrong, then he said, go for a variance. And then we said we went for a variance. And then he said that that was not accepted either. So, you know. Okay. It, and I, I'm sorry, who, did, who was the fence guy? Ron Niebuhr? Yeah, Ron Niebuhr. Ron? Neighbor, it's 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 a weird. It's like N E I B H U R. That's a weird spelling. I have not name and number. That's all I can tell you. He's the fence guy who did the fences in the uh, neighborhood. Uh, in the neighborhood. Okay. So thirty. So thirty feet. Would you? He's been out to the house to try and understand if we can give you that. Go ahead. So, uh, yeah, that might be a good idea. So thirty feet would be about halfway in from from where it is now. No, 30 feet, right. Yeah. So we went, we were already 16 feet. We wanted to go 30 feet past the 16, so it would have been a total of 46 feet. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Art? I do. Okay. Why can't you have a three foot fence there? The dogs are going to jump. The dogs are 100 and. Yeah. I, have, I mean, I have two puppies. They're right. going to jump a three and a half foot fence. She'd go right over it. She'd go right over the fence. The, the, Okay, and we've had, you're not going to keep those dogs over three and a half foot. Yeah, no. Plus, you know people I mean, can then look over the fence, yeah. and, and if they, they see the dogs. They'll stand over it. You right. know what I mean? They'll just stand on top of it just to right. be. Then why can't you put the fence back where the other one was? What's your reasoning? You wanted, you wanted a bigger yard, but you don't right. need a bigger yard for the dogs. I would have liked a bigger yard for my dogs. You would like run. a bigger yard. Yes, you don't I need would. a bigger yard for the well, dogs. Well, one of the, we believe, the one of the reasons that impacted <coughs> the lives of the other two dogs is they didn't have enough room to run and play in the backyard. I mean, there's a very limited amount of space in that backyard for two dogs <coughs> to exercise in the backyard. You know, and we've had that property for over 30 years. We're the second generation in that house. Right. I have no other questions. I think you know, this has been self imposed. I mean, I don't think it's just the dogs. Imposed? I think it's, it's ours, too, our, for us to enjoy it, too. Phyllis? But it's not impossible for you to move the fence back to the other fence line. Where that would go, we'd have to then re either dig out those old footings that are there uh, realign the fence, but once we move that fence and, and tried to do that again, that would be an additional charge over the three thousand dollars or just moving it back. The I don't think five it's a matter of like that. 
the reason yeah. we spent a lot of money on this fence, this fence was very expensive, right. and that we could get a loan to pay for this. It was $9,000 because you guys, we went for the permit, we tried to do everything right. So in order for us to take this fence down, it's an we're stuck to it, we're stuck right. with it. I'm, I'm very aware that this is a costly experience, both financially and emotionally. I'm just asking questions. Yes. No, no, oh, no, no, to absolutely. Try to, to try to, no, believe me, we've done it too. That's right. why and we, we that's why we, we had we had the fence guy out right. three we times trying to, to figure you know, it to see out. If we could move it. You know what I mean? Right. That's why we said, well, if we moved it in ten feet or whatever, however many feet, to get through these things. So, so the red line. To see this red line, <coughs> is that the thirty feet from the middle of the road? Is that the magic? No, no, no that's, that's no. It's still that's still in twenty now. feet into the. Um, you could see where the fence guy put where it is currently. It's that, point nine. See the feet. X's? Yep. Yes. The black is where it is currently, and the red is what they're proposing to move it to. And where oh. is the magic in code number? Where is, where is, you, is um, yeah, a dotted line, line, a pencil dotted line. Oh, okay. And so so it's still 20 feet. 20 feet. Yeah, okay. so it's, there's, you know, 25 feet from the top and then, you know, an extra 20 feet in. And how um, far are you proposing to move? It's 10, you're going to have it, move it 10 feet in from the property line? Yeah. 10 feet from where it is now. From where it is. So that would make it, what, a total of? Then 19 or 20 feet? Yeah. 20 feet on the southbound and 10 feet on the northbound. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if I may. Go ahead. Okay. Go back to where the fence was in the beginning. Yes. You said there are footings there. Yes, because that's where you have the Why can't they move the fence a foot from those footings to move it? On the opposite side or on the inside? On the inside would allow us to have if inside toward the house would give you, you probably like less than four feet of if you walking. Came a foot, maybe even two feet past where the footings are now toward the road. That way you don't need to dig up footings. It's just reinstalling the fence and new footings. Right. Uh, again, that's why we had Christina come out to try and understand the difference between, you know, moving it five feet, moving it in the center of that and what would be you know to give the best appearance and yet still give us you're, you know, not, you're the not answering the question I'm, I have to apologize but you're not answering the question I, I what's it feasible no, I mean, why would yes it it's, it's feasible to go on the other side of those mm. footings the road. but then you'd have to measure mm. in yes right. so, so instead of being 30 feet from the road you'd be 28 feet from the road 18 feet from the house right No. Simone. Diane? No, nothing. Okay. Larry? Nothing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this application? If you're on the Zoom, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand uh, and we'll acknowledge you. So if I may, Paul? Yeah. Also, if you're on the phone, I just want to point out, because uh, I see a couple people on the phone, you would use star six to unmute yourself. I'm not seeing anyone. All right. Go ahead. So I, I do have additional pictures of other properties on a list of uh, 23 other properties. I don't know if that is just more clutter for it, these. Are any board. of them corner lots? Yes, there are corner lots. You have 23 other corner lots. Yeah. And images and their addresses and pictures. Now, those are not all vinyl fences. Some of them are wooden stockades, mm -hmm. um, truly stockade fences. Um, but I, I don't know if, like if I you said, want us to consider them, then you should submit them. And I'll note for the record that you, in addition, you submitted a number of pre-printed forms and a letter. So that'll go into the record also. Uh, the pre, uh, from the neighbors? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Why don't you give them that mess? 
Can you get this list? Yes. Oh, okay. this is yes. Should I present them? Now? You can give them to Sonia. She'll put them in the record. Is there any other questions we can give you? Okay. Um, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Any Thank discussion? you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there aye. any opposed? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Then that motion carries. That brings us to item number nine. 91 Violet Avenue. Hi. Uh, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Brittany Espiritu. This is Gabe Espiritu and the homeowners. Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Espiritu, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? <coughs> yes. Yes, we do. All right. Why don't you describe what you want to do? So we are hoping to build a deck in our side yard because like many families, we've been spending a lot of time at home with our children this year and that will give us like a little more space so <laughs> we are applying for a variance because the deck will um it's like a 50 percent variance i guess because it's a side yard um on a corner lot um so we believe that the, because the deck's in the side yard it's not going to create an undesirable appearance because it's not going to be very easily visible from the road um so there's not really another place for us to put a deck because it's a corner lot and the, the garage is detached and behind the house so we don't have much of a backyard we really only have side yards okay and <clears throat> if i recall the whole the side yard is mostly surrounded by a stockade fence yes okay and there's not much room between the house and the side lot line is that correct right so i guess um uh, we need a 10 foot um, variance according to the regulation. Okay. And part of it is that you're replacing the porch? Well, the porch is already there, so the, the porch needs to be redone anyway. Like, we wanted the stairs on the other side just for ease of, um, you know, unloading and loading the car with all the children and groceries and stuff. So, while we were looking at the porch, we would like to just wrap it around on the side there. So, they said, the contractor said that the existing porch could be updated and just sort of built onto so that we could update the existing porch as well as extend it onto that, um, extend it onto the deck, which is all reflected in the, the you know, drawings and the building. Okay, and, and you mentioned, <coughs> I think it's quite clear that you won't, there, no one could actually even see the deck from any outside property. Is that accurate? It doesn't, yeah, between the garage and the stockade fence. That, and then that's what, you know, we would like privacy with our deck. We have small children. Um, you know, we're not looking for a deck that everyone can see when they're driving down Lyman Avenue. So I don't plan on um, not having that fence there. All right. And <clears throat> the deck is significantly far away from the uh, Violet Avenue, right? Oh, oh yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like there was no issues i think even with the, like the town code it was well within the town code and um it was just that side that had the, the variant issue the setback from the front yard was okay okay as far as we understand uh then i think those are all the questions i have christine no questions all right no, no questions phyllis no questions tony no questions simona no questions diane no questions larry no questions is there anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this application? I don't see anyone in the audience, but is there anyone in the Zoom world that wishes to comment? Again, star six if you're on a phone to unmute, or if you're on Zoom, just unmute or raise your hand. All right, I don't see or hear anyone, so then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. <laughs> any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. That brings us to, um, to item two, 
2381 New Hackensack Road. Is there someone here now for that application? I don't, I don't hear any response, so I'll, <coughs> we'll move back to item number three, 3532 North Road. Is there someone here for that application? Yeah, Marty was on before. Martin, Marty, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Marty Berger. Okay. Mr. Berger, do you swear? I'm here to know the submission income action signs. Both swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yes. Okay, so last time uh, you were here, I don't think the county had, uh, you had seen the county input yet. So have, had you an have you had an opportunity to review the county's comments? Yes. Okay, and do you want to respond to any of their comments? Um, did the did the owner Chipotle he's, he's on the phone too? Did he want to respond? Yeah, yeah I'll be happy to respond. I'm Martin Berger with the OG Saber Heritage LLC. We are the developer owner of the property. Um, our concept uh, for building Hudson Heritage uh, that uh, that the town planning board spent a significant amount of time uh, reviewing and approving basically created a town center. Uh, and as a result of that, the retail store has spaced in inward into a, um, uh, an interim road called Winslow Gate Road. And that was such that we could create a pedestrian experience with parks and a walkable community. The good news about that is, is that, in fact, there'll be a wonderful walkable community with, where, where people can walk through the development and access the front entrances to the store. The hardship that it creates is that the backs of the store are along Route 9. And as a result of that, they don't have the typical signage that a front entrance has for people to see as they're driving by and locate the, the store. So in order to overcome the hardship that emanates from the uh, uh, approvals and the, and, and the type of product that we're developing, the Chipotle is requesting and we are supportive of the extra sign, which would be on the Route 9 facing side of the project, of the building, excuse me, in order to have uh, the, um, the appropriate signage that most, um, most uh, street retailers have. And that's why we're requesting the, uh, the approval that we're, that we're for the uh, third time. Okay, do you want to add? I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Do you want to add, the sign person, do you want to add anything to that? No, that, that's, he did a really good job with that. Okay. All right. Um, let me, let me just, so, uh, to refresh my rec recollection, can you tell me the distance between the pylon sign and, and the side of the building? 450 feet. The, the Route 9 side of the building? Correct. What, what makes it even uh, more of a hardship is that the pylon sign uh, basically has, is limited to signage for each particular tenant to basically uh, a sign board that's uh, less than one foot tall and, uh, and describing the Chipotle, listing the Chipotle name. So uh, as you're driving by, it's, it's not going to attract uh, more than that. It really doesn't reflect the corporate character and the image and logo of the uh, of, of the retailer. No one's going to drive by and uh, and see that Chipotle is on the uh, is on the um, uh, pylon and, and I say I want to go there for Chipotle. Uh, it's really necessary for the for the typical Chipotle banner, if you will, to be located on the, on the front of the uh, building. Well, in this case, I would say on the back of the building. So in the context- you get most, I'm sorry. No, I go apologize. ahead. No, go ahead, finish. 
I was going to say in, in, in any time, in any set of times, but certainly in these economic post-pandemic times, times, it's almost impossible to get a retailer to take a, a, a premise without you know, having adequate signage. Uh, and, and here it's just you know, uh, uh, made impossible for, for a tenant retailer to do business by having their storefront face face the, the inside of, of, the, of the development. Um, and you were granted how many prior, how many signs do you have that would, are permitted now on the building? Michelle, I believe the original application, right, there's two in the pylon sign. Okay. And let me ask you this. Do you consider, is it more of a <coughs> business for the walkable community or do you foresee more uh, drive-in? Patrons. Well, the the, the walk the, the residents on site when fully built out will be maybe two thousand residents, and you'll have uh, customers of Shoprite and some of the other customers. But you have twenty five thirty thousand automobiles a day driving by the site. So of course the the answer is that it's the route nine drive by traffic that you're going to uh, attract and cause them to come into the project. And Mr. Berger, I just want to be clear about the distance between the pylon, the existing pylon on Route 9 and the, and the back of the building. Could you confirm that distance for me? Uh, well, I'm, I don't have a site plan in front of me. Michelle said it's 425 feet, which, which um, uh, I certainly prop. Okay, I'm sorry, Michelle. No, I'm at 450, and that is a question that you guys had asked at the end of the last meeting. And I sent it back. Um, so the sign is designed um, by a group, and they were responsible for submitting all the applications and everything to you. We put all that together, and that was missing. So they went back and they gave us that number, and that's the number, that 450. But you asked from the pylon sign to where we want the new sign. That's, and that's the That's distance. the difference. Yeah, that's the so distance I'm looking for, yes. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's that's all I have. Christine? No questions. All right. Do you, do you, you said you have two signs that are that they can put up. Is that right? Yeah, they have they have two so signs. The, that two are signs that are that permitted. are permitted. One is gonna be facing the grocery store and one's gonna be facing north. Is that true? On the property? That was a question. There's a small side, a small sign on the side of the building that faces the, the north side of this uh, up on the building, correct? So that will be. It's almost there. like a banner. It's almost like a banner sign as compared to a sign that would appear on the front or the back. Do you know the size of, of a uh, of a store? Okay, for the sign person. Michelle. Do you know the size of that sign? On the, on the north side? I didn't hear. Did you ask what the size was of that the, sign, sir? The size of the sign the on the door. I'm trying to flip through and see it because that that's previously approved. Right, and that that <sighs> sign is backlit, correct? Oh, the sign that we're requesting. All of the signs for Chipotle are standard okay. and oh, backlit, cool. correct? So do you have the size? It's their, it's their branding. So these are not like, it's not a special extra, it's their standard. Do you have the size of that sign? <coughs> yeah, the one that was previously approved, right? The north, the north facing, the north facing side. Mm -hmm. The one that faces Hyde Park. Well, you're not from the area, but the north facing side. Hang on a second. Did you have something? Did you have, did you have another question, Art? That was the Are you waiting? That's the main question. Okay. Waiting for an answer. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I'm trying to go through the application. I have. You don't know the size. Everything that we're applying for. Um, you don't know the size of the signs know. that you want. The existing signage. I'm having problems finding. Hang on a second. I'll try and grab it for you. Hold up. My recollection is it's under a foot. That's under a foot? I believe, uh, foot and height, but let me just uh, oh, double check. Give me one second. Right, because it's, it's a small sign that goes where they pick up from around the side of the building, right? Uh. Hi, can you guys hear me now? This is Dan Radman with Chipotle. Yep. Yes, Dan, we can. Ah, uh, finally, Radman. I was on the line Mr. for the Radman. last 15 excuse minutes me. listening to you guys, but Mr. you couldn't Radman. hear me. Oh, excuse, Mr. I'd like Radman, to offer a comment please. when the opportunity arrives. Could you hold on for a minute Mr. so we can get you sworn in? Hold on. Mr. Radman, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to provide tonight is true and complete to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Thank you. So, so the answer to your question is, I believe that that side sign is a sign area that is two foot four feet high and 12 feet long. And that's the sign area. And then within that is the uh, Chipotle uh, sign. Uh, if I'm possible to share a screen with you, I could I could uh, share share it with you. Sure, that'd be helpful. Are, we, are, you still, are you asking for the size of the north and east signage? The question is the sign. The existing the sign, sign is of, correct. Yes, yes, the sign of the north that's on the side of the building. Yeah, I believe it is 34 square feet total, if I'm not mistaken. That's the north side. The north side. Okay, you see. That, yeah. Which would basically be the maximum allowable under the, the zoning code. Right. So, yeah. okay. so that. That sign should be at that size should be fairly visible yeah. from Route Nine coming south, based on the height of that retail establishment and where the road is. Correct. Hello. Yes. Okay. Thank you. If you'd like us to surrender the pylon sign, we'd be more than happy to. If that would solve your issue. Not really. No. Phyllis, did you have any questions? No questions. Tony? I have no questions. Simone? No questions. Diane? Just one question. Was it to your understanding when you signed on to, to place the Pachol oh, sorry, Chipotle in, in this location um, that did you know that there would not be a sign allowed on the back of the building? Well, no, we did not. I can, go ahead, Martin. Perhaps I can answer that better. When when we created this, this was the unique zone uh, Hudson uh, for Hudson Heritage, and 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 there's no other mixed use development that's a town center that has stores in this configuration. And when we uh, undertook this project, and when we had plenty of conversations with the planning board and talked about the unique requirements of it, this was absolutely a thousand percent a mandatory item as part of our ability to lease the project and move forward with it. Uh, so after the uh, project, and, and part of the process, part of the permitting process that we, that we undertook was to create signage criteria. And we spent a lot of money and a lot of time creating that site criteria for exactly this kind of purpose. And uh, we submitted a full signage package describing exactly what we and retailers would require given the configuration and situation. And this was clearly part of that. Unfortunately, for one reason or another, after while we received the pr approval and we thought that the signage was fully approved the way it's drafted, it turned out that over a year or two years later, only then was the signage actually finalized, and uh, this was deleted from the, the presentation of what was required. So I'm not sure about the tenant, 
But we let the developer owner undertake his massive project and attract the retailers to it, given the fact that the storage space in would identified very early on as part of our planning process with the planning board and discussions with the town board, this would absolutely be a correct and important item. And, and we were frankly established that a year or two later, when we thought all of it was approved as part of the, uh, the approval for the Hudson Heritage to find out that it wasn't, and we had then had to go back and, and redo it. And when we did the signage, it came back without, without the ability for the tenants that have storefronts backing on Route 9 to have a signage on Route 9. I mean, who would ever think that you're driving by a, re a retail center and you see a building without a signage on it? Tell me this, how many, how many buildings in the plan will, will face or have their backs to Route 9? Well, there are, uh, have their backs to Route 9? Yeah, they would require there's this. Probably, there's probably uh, six or seven. Most of them, yeah, probably six or seven. And you know, and, and for the time being, we're trying. We, we need Chipotle. We need to address Chipotle because the buildings, the buildings up and the tenants opening. If you're suggesting that we go back to the planning board for a modification of our approvals, I'll certainly do that. I did not anticipate to have this much of an issue when we're trying to really put this t retailer on the same par as every other retailer up and down the line. But isn't the concept Main Street? that it, it isn't like every other retailer on Route 9, isn't it? Isn't it supposed to be creating a, a, a Main Street feel that is insular to Route 9? Therefore... If you want to, if, if you want to have a 300 square foot mont and pa retailer, then, and hope that they'll survive, then the answer is yes. And we certainly have 300 square foot retailers that'll, that'll open up on Main Street and, and, uh, and hopefully do well and, and, and exist. But if you're looking to attract the quality retailers of Chipotle and other ones like Chipotle, no, they're never gonna survive on, on, on the amount of traffic that comes in and out uh, on Main Street from, from uh, you know, the, the residents on site. I mean, to be honest, this is Dan Radman with Chipotle. We've been working on this project, Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, for the better part of a year and a half to two years. And the intent of the signage strategy always included some visibility to uh, Route 9. We have that opportunity at the corner. There is that view shed opportunity between the landscaping of the existing trees and the corner. It's in clear view of the corner, and that was one of our key determining factors in selecting this site, at that we would have some visibility with a sign facing Route 9. Um, to then have the modified signage regulate or the signage regulations passed back in June and then not have that ability now, that was a serious blow. Um, I mean, to, to Martin's point, there will be some traffic, obviously, that will come into the center, but not having any visibility to Route 9 seriously hinders our, our abilities of making our presence known to all possible patrons. But you do have the pylon. The pilot, like Martin said, it's a small pylon panel. We are not one of the primary signs on the pylon. We are one of the secondary or tertiary signs on the pylon. And it would be visible, but by the time you're driving north on Route 9 and you see the pylon, you won't even know that we were there. You might pass us by. Secondly, coming down from Route 9, coming south, there's a line of trees that uh, currently exist which obstruct the view to the buildings until you get to a certain point closer to the corner where you then have a full view of the west side of the building, which is a sign we're talking about, and you don't have a view of the north side of the building anymore, which we already have a sign on. So from Route 9, um, not having a sign on the west elevation um, does not, you know, we. We, we won't be known to the, the, the uh, commuters or the users of Route 9 that we're there.
Dan, that, that was your one question, Dan? Yes, I'm okay. done. Thank you. All right. Larry? Uh, no questions. Okay. Anyone else? Any board members? Okay, Art? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Question for whoever. I don't care who answers it. These, these, what is the minimal sign that you would be able to live with facing Route 9 if you got a sign? What's the smallest sign you could live with? Reasonably. Hello. Uh, you're both muted uh, right now. Marty, I can unmute you. All right. I mean, to, to this is Dan Rappin from Chipotle. Again, yeah. this, you know, this facade is not on right on top of Route 9. It's 400 plus 450 feet uh, it, to the pylon plus additional to the street. I so we're a football field and a half away from from Route 9. Correct. Um, if you would allow us to put our our sign, similar sign that we have on the other elevations, which I, I believe, I don't have the drawing in front of me right now, I apologize, I'm dialing in from the car, sure. but I believe it was 34 square feet, um, that would be ideal. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Let's turn it around. If you put a larger sign facing Route 9, what would you accept on the other side of the building if we were so inclined to grant this? Could you live with something smaller to kind of work with us? If that's what it takes? Uh, yeah, we could work with you, obviously. Um, we'd like to keep them uniform, and I, I would like to reserve the right to revisit all three signs. If we could keep them all uniform of one size, reduce them all to your point if you're, if you're looking to count the square footage numbers overall as a total. Um, you know, we have not fabricated the signs yet, so uh, we could look at the others and go slightly smaller and keep them all uniform. Would that be something you'd be willing to do and maybe postpone this to the next meeting? Um, sure, we could revisit that and come back to you with those options. You know, in fairness to, to you and with the county and us? I don't know. I'm just grasping. I'm sorry. I said, you know, I'm trying to make something that's fair to you, to us, and to the county, and to everybody else. Just, I'm grasping it, you know. When do you yeah, anticipate opening? I, and, we, and we want to be fair. We're just, you know, we want, you know, we're, we're looking to do what's right here. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, so, we, we want to gain the visibility of our store, but uh, right. we're more than willing to work with you on this. And with Martin, obviously, because there are other tenants that will face similar issues gonna, in, in the future. Right. We're all going to have, the, they're all going to have the same problem. So. Right. Mr. Chairman, is that something? That it is. Tell me when when do you anticipate opening? Sorry, say again? When do you anticipate opening? Well, uh, Martin can tell you that better than I can. Uh, we're, we're looking to uh, take possession of the space within the next few weeks uh, and then do our interior fit out of the uh, space will take approximately 14 weeks total. So we're most likely going to be opening in January sometime at, at the current projected schedule. Okay, yeah, all right. Then in that case, unless anyone has anything else to add, I'll just make a motion to adjourn to the October 18th. Second. I think and <laughs> you'll be able to come up with some different solutions. Sure. Okay. Is, is that something you could you could possibly fax to the zoning administrator so we can have hard copies here? Well, it's email or email, yeah. which, whatever's yeah. best. Yeah. 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 Email. Yeah. Yeah. If we can Sorry. email it, Pony if Express. We can email it, that'd be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pony Express. Whatever. Paul, would it be helpful for them to show some renderings? Yes, right. we'd like to see things on the side of the building. You know, so we can get a better Absolutely. understanding. We can uh, we can take some. Uh, well, the, the, the shell of the building is still under construction, but I think it's substantially complete enough that if we did a, a little mock-up on one of the images to show you the different sizes, yes. that, would that suffice? That'd be Even great. though the building's not 100% <laughs> complete yet? Can you give us a perspective from Route 9 also? Of course, yep. Okay. Okay. I'm good with that. Thank right. you. Then all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Okay, that carries. That brings Thank us you. to item two. Try one more time. Anyone here for 2381 New Hackensack Road? Thank you for your
your time. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> hearing no one, what's what's the board's pleasure? Do you want to adjourn this or do you want to vote on this tonight? Which one are we talking about? I'm sorry, United Methodist. United Methodist. Right, I do. Wherever you want to go, I don't care. Okay, then I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any, any opposed? All right. That carries. Then uh, we're going to adjourn for a short break, about five minutes or so, and then we'll come back for deliberations.
All right, we're back in session. Uh, Diane and Larry, are you back? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, we're gonna, and I'm going to mute uh, just. Uh, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to mute that uh, iPhone. Dublin's iPhone, just for the moment. Okay. All right, so we're going to. Um, well, let's see who's here. Mm -hmm. Is Mr. Orifice still here? Thank you. Okay. So bring us to number six, 16 Donny Drive. <coughs> this is a request for a variance for a, an existing shed, one foot four inches from the side property line, requiring a side yard variance of eight feet, eight inches. Um, anybody have any concerns about this one? Okay. And let me offer these findings. Whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of a variance. Um, this shed has existed in its location for a number of years without any impact on the, on the environment. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Um, there is no other way to do this uh, based upon the location that the house is probably within the side yard setback um, and the unusual um, size of the lot and area, um, area of the lot and whether the requested area variance is substantial mathematically it certainly is but based upon the situation of the lot it uh, it does not have a big effect whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district there are no physical or environmental conditions which will be affected by this and whether the alleged difficulty was self-created it certainly was but that's not a reason to deny this application and I offer those <coughs> and so um, let's see Christine do you mind make a motion sure I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item number six 
This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth Excuse by the me, chair. Paul? Someone. Um, were you had said that you were going yes, to. Yes, I want to add that condition that. Um, okay. Yeah. Conditioned upon. Um, removing the other shed. Thank you. Uh, with the condition of removing the the other larger shed that's on the other side of the house. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion on this? No. All right. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Then that brings us to item number three. This is a request for, um, actually, not three, six, seven. Actually, there are the cardinal Yes. <coughs> this is number eight, 10 Cardinal Drive. <coughs> this is a fence um, requiring a two and a half foot variance for a six foot high fence that's on a corner lot along Peacock Lane. So, uh, what does everybody think about this? <coughs> I've described the, the, I think that the, um, the evil that the code is trying to prevent is um, the compounding right. nature of six foot fences or fences that exceed three and a half feet on corner lots. Um, and <coughs> the applicants request to move it just um, a few feet, I don't think in any way um, changes that impact that it has on the environment. I recognize that the um, applicant has provided some other pictures of other corner lots, but I, I don't think that's sufficient to um, change the impact that this application has on, on the environment where it is. What, what if they moved it back a little bit more and put some tall plantings that they maintained on the, on the outside of the fence to kind of soften that sea of white? Okay, so, um, actually, what happened to that back? You mean the front side? Excuse me? Yeah, okay. Are you talking about the front side of the house or the side? I'm talking about the side, I think it's Peacock Lane, because that's where it's, it's, is that? Or maybe even in, maybe even also in the in the front, just to kind of. Um, so, actually, this one's. Uh, so I, the way I calculated out where they want to move it now is still. Um, Twenty feet. Past the the thirty foot. Right. Thing. So. Maybe I could uh, see something in between where they want to put it and the 20 feet, but I, I don't think it really changes the whole. Th it still looks like a compound based upon the, six, uh, the property surrounded by a six foot fence. So I'm, I'm not inclined to grant this. I think they, they have a couple different options. They can have a three and a half foot fence. They could change the nature of the, or the um, type of fence so that it's more open, so it's not doesn't have that compounding look. Um, but uh, I don't think that this their application uh, addresses my concerns. All right. I agree. And the third option was move it back to where the yeah, to where yeah, they certainly can move it so it can it comports <coughs> with the code. That gives them thirty feet, right? Mm -hmm. So. And we're just talking about. Side of the fence, or are we talking about the front? Well, both. Well. <coughs> the front only impacts the one along Cardinal Drive. Only impacts it where it's more than thirty feet. So if you bring it back, if you bring the Peacock Lane back to where it is, then that makes the other one com comply with the code because it's behind the, that part of the front. Right. Actually, I suppose. Yeah. If it's behind. Except for there's two front lines, right? I wouldn't have any problem if I would not have a problem if they brought it back within the 30 feet on the peak on the peacock lane side, because that's really the that problem. That would be where the original fence was. Is that where that? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that. And then uh, the front 
if they made a comp if they complied, I, I think that that that's all. I'm not inclined to to grant the a variance. So the front fence that's right up on Cardinal that would stay. Yeah, because that's that's more than thirty feet from Cardinal Drive. It's still, and it's probably and it's probably more than thirty feet from Peacock. So. So where they're proposing it now is. Yeah, it's it's still is 20, 25 feet in in inside the side lot, inside the front yard setback. So you wouldn't want to see it any, I mean, you'd want to see it like basically where I, I don't think that any, you know, so if I, if you said move it 20 feet, I mean, how does that help them? <coughs> Again, what I was saying that, you know, the gentleman was saying that there's some kind of footing, and I don't understand a footing on a fence, but there's some kind of footing that's the 16 foot bar. So, from about 18 feet from the house, and then you bypass the footing issue and run the fence. Yeah. That would be my suggestion. Phyllis? Or? We had something similar come up, and the person was able to go from the middle of the road back 35 feet, put plantings. Hmm? That's how it was in your call. They put plantings in front of it. It's it's the one we recently did. We did a lot of them because people all wanted pools, and they wanted to fence their pool. It turned out beautifully, and because it's pushed back enough, you really don't have any of that. Um, <coughs> effect that you're trying to avoid. There's no contact work. And and the guy planted very low maintenance, nice growing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tony? I think um, as presented in the application, I'm not inclined to go along with it, but any one of these three options would be reasonable. Yeah. And because they would comply. And Diane? Yeah, I am. Um, there's so many variations that I have to be honest. I'm reluctant to, to, to really declare my opinion because it's hard to visualize where we've come from and where it's going. Um, uh, I, I guess I'll have to agree with, with the rest that should be brought down to a lower level and, and I would not go with the full height. Okay, and Tony? Tony Larry. Uh, Larry, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to, um, to approve and I think maybe discussing options that the applicants um, aren't interested in. Okay. Can we, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Can we see those pictures that they submitted again of the other properties? Um, <clears throat> or is that hard? That, that can't be done on. I don't, I don't think there's a way to do that for you. Okay. So the board does have some new evidence before it tonight. If the board members that aren't in person wanted to see those pictures, you do have 62 days from the date that the public hearing was closed to make a decision. So you do have the ability to defer a decision on this matter until next month. Um, but, or you have the ability to um, vote on it this evening. It does seem though from what the applicants have said that a three and a half foot fence doesn't accommodate their need to keep the Rottweilers in the boundary. So they would be looking for a six foot fence or you know a different location for the fence but i don't think for their purposes to achieve the benefit that they're looking for a three and a half foot high fence works for them to achieve the benefit <clears throat> and lisa what's the status of the um criminal complaint my understanding is that it's on hold pending the outcome of this application 
Okay. And typically when you make an application to a uh, to the zoning board, that stays the criminal proceedings until there's a determination made by the board. Okay. All right, well, in that case then, if, if everyone wants to review the additional documents that were presented today, then um, I would make a motion to adjourn it to the October 18th. Um, to adjourn the decision. To adjourn the, the decision. The already right. closed. Right. We're going to adjourn the decision until October 18th. That would also, if the board were so inclined, they could individually or collectively go view the houses that the applicant submitted the pictures of also and uh, see, you know, how far those are set back, what the feeling is on those um, in terms of distance from the road, et cetera, and maybe come up for, at the next meeting, during the next meeting, with a, a proposal that the board can agree on. All right. Um, so, actually, I don't have to make a motion to not decide tonight, right? Right. If there's, n if there's not a motion to decide, then it's right. the decision is automatically adjourned okay. to the uh, October meeting. Okay. All right. So... I have a question. Go ahead, Larry. So we're saying that other than the pictures of additional houses, that would be the, that would be the determining factor. Well, it could be. I mean, if, if everyone viewed those other houses and saw that uh, it, that was a reason to grant this one, then I, then I suppose, yeah. Or on the other side of that, could be a reason to tell them to move the fences. Yeah. Or, or uh, do enforcement on the other places. You'll provide us with the list. Yeah, you think you can figure out what the addresses are on those that they were? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And I could, do you want to schedule something for everybody yeah. to go out there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This one. Thank you. This is a chat. This is a chat. You have um, two people on still. Who, yeah, who I do you think, think is uh, 48 Treetop is Dimitri? Yep. Violet right. Avenue. Mm -hmm. and Violet Avenue. And then 19 Violet Avenue. And then Violet Avenue is Esperi 2. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So Marty, I, I don't know if you are on intentionally, but um, just we're not going to be making any decision on your application tonight, so you don't have to stay. It's up to you. Okay. All right, I think uh, next is number four. That's 48 Treetop Lane. Okay. Anybody have any concerns about this one? No. no. All right, so, <clears throat> yeah, so this is held over from the last month when we had some confusion about where mm -hmm. um, everything, but now we recognize that it's really going in the same spot. Okay. So let me offer these uh, findings, whether an undesirable change was produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. It does not appear that there would be any impact since this is really um, a restoration of an existing what was a carport was now just going to turn into a covered enclosed deck. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance based upon the location of the house and the side lot that's and the driveway, this is the only place to put that. Whether the requested area variance is substantial, numerically it is substantial but based upon the topography between this property and the neighbor's property and the uh, vegetation, the screen vegetation, and the distance between the structures, it does not really appear to be substantial. And uh, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district, there do not appear to be any physical or environmental conditions um, created by this application. And whether it's self-created, it is in the sense that, um, that based upon where the driveway and building is, that it's self-created, but that's not a reason to deny it. 
and I would offer those findings. Um, all right, do you mind making a motion? Nope, no problem. <coughs> I, <coughs> excuse me, I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item four. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts as findings set forth in the chair by the chair. And there really wasn't anything unusual. No, no, yeah. Second. All right. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor signify by, by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Let's see. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And let's see. Is it, it's uh looks like the spirit to the left. Right. We lost Desperito. Okay. We did. So we can go to yeah, the over here. We made it all that way. <laughs> <laughs> so near. All right, all right. Then we'll I we'll go back to number two, twenty three eighty one New Hacking Sack Road. There's no staff report on this one, right? No. Okay. Um, so this is the both the EMD sign and an increase in, in sign. Anybody have any real concerns about this one? No. Okay. No. All right, all, let me ask you, I do have a question, and again, I'm sorry because I know we're running long. This sign cannot be active like the one in front of the school is on, on the Backfield, right? It's backfield because that's moving all the time. That's, that's changing all the time. So the church sign cannot it has to be static, other than the 24-hour change. Is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's 12 hours according to the code. Okay, whatever the code means. Okay, that's fine. Because the one in front of the school is constantly changing. But I feel like that should fall under the same thing, right, Lisa? Yes, it should. And if it was granted a variance, that was probably part of the variance. So. Um, yeah, but we'll have to look into that one in particular. But they should not be changing it every unless more frequently than once every 12 hours. I'm okay with it. Did we need to talk, Chrissy, about um, the, the EMD portion of the sign and the interpretation versus variance based on the county's comments? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Do you? Do you you don't think it's a use variance, do you? No, not a use variance, but what the county was saying is if you had it as a, um, and the phrase is escaping me right now, but the, the type of sign that's permitted, the EMD is only a portion of the sign, so it's not really, the whole sign would not be an exempt sign because it's only the EMD portion that would be exempt. Yeah. So they were saying it should actually be considered to be a variance from the section of the code that prohibits the EMD rather than determining that EMD signs are uh, exempt signs yep. because uh -huh. it's not technically a whole EMD sign. Right. So it would be a variance from 210, uh, yeah, 210-123.1A EMD signage that's prohibited normally in R20 zone. And this is an unlisted action, right? It's an unlisted action. And before you ask me, I don't believe that we need to re-notice it because I think the um, public hearing notice, even though it's technically a different type of variance versus an exempt sign, I think the public hearing notice adequately set forth what they were looking to do. So I think we're covered within the scope of that for what we're planning to do. What about the color of the lighting? Do they, I don't, is it going to be red or can we say we'd like it to be the I'm sorry, it was hard to hear the question. Was it a question about the intensity of the lighting of the sign? Actually, the first question was about color, but then my question was about intensity. Yeah, both. You know, whether so, it's amber color or, or red, I know that um, we've in the past, we've 
we've made it a point to say that it, it would be amber. EMD signs shall utilize automatic dimming technology to adjust the brightness of the sign relative to ambient light so that at no time shall a sign exceed brightness level of 0 0.2 foot candle above ambient light measured at the nearest property line. But nothing about color? Correct. Typically, the, for all colors, I thought the board recommended less than 3,000 Kelvin if it's in that. And in some instances, they've been encouraging 2,700 Kelvin. So I don't, um, if the board were so inclined, you could do that as a condition and um, have them comply. Or the, probably the more preferable way in case for some reason they were unable to comply with that precisely would be to offer the planning staff guidance and say that um, one of the conditions would be that the lighting would have to be satisfactory to planning staff as opposed to trying to set arbitrary standards without knowing exactly what the sign requirements are. Is that right, Mike? We could do that, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> then let's see. I'll make a motion that uh, the ZBA is um, the lead agency in determination for um, uh, environmental review. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? That carries. And then I'll make a motion that um, the proposed action would not have a significant environmental impact and issue a negative declaration. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? <coughs> then that motion carries. And I'm submitting the short form. Thank you. OK. And then <coughs> I would offer these findings. Um, whether an undesirable, be changed, an undesirable change would reduce in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. Um, Although this is characterized as a res residential neighborhood, um, there's really nobody particularly close to either sides of where the sign is. Um, and therefore, I don't see that it'll be an undesirable change. There already is a sign there now, and this is just making a, adding an additional or an increase in sign plus the EMD. Uh, whether it can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Although there are other methods to um, for the sign, this is the method that the applicant wishes to use and therefore uh, requires an area variance. Whether the requested area variance is substantial, um, it, it is substantial in, in the sense that the EMDs are not allowed there and the, it appears that the actual signage um, is significantly higher than what's allowed in the code. However, due to some reasons that we can't particularly discern, um, it's really not much bigger than what exists at the present time. And whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions, uh, there do not appear to be any impacts of, on the physical or environmental um, conditions of the environment so long as um, the EMD follows the code and uh, we would add a condition that um, also the, the EMD sign is subject to planning approval, and I would offer offer Let's those. Make sure that's planning department. Planning department. Yeah, just okay. not planning board. Okay. Just planning department approval, and I would offer those findings. Second. Second. Um, Tony, may I make a motion? Wait one second. You didn't do um, number five. Oh, whether it's, whether it's self, -created? self created? Yes, it's certainly self created, but that's not a reason to deny <coughs> the application. I'll still second it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I move that the board approve the request for an area variance, variance set forth in item number two. This decision is based on a review of the application testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in public hearing and results of site visits by the board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth by the chair. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. 
That brings us, I think, to item number five. Um, this is 12 field court, the area of the applicant seeking a variance uh, for a side, large, side yard lot uh, to ex variance to, to legalize an existing screen in porch located 10 feet from the property line, requiring a variance of 10 feet. Um, anybody have any concerns about this one? All right, so this was an existing uh, screened in porch. There's a new purchaser, and this is just uh, legalizing it. It appears that the building ins inspector has been out there and doesn't see any real problems with it. So I, I would offer these findings. <laughs> Whether an undesirable change would produce in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. This has existed for quite some time, and in fact, it has just been improved by prior to a recent sale. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Um, there is no other way to, to do this based upon the location of the house and the, the lot size. Whether the re requested area variance is substantial, it is mathematically. However, it has no greater impact on the side lot line than the existing structure which is permitted. And four, whether in a proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact <coughs> on the physical and environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. There do not appear to be any physical or environmental uh, impact from this application. And whether the alleged difficulty it was self-created, um, it certainly was in the sense that it exists and, and violates the zoning code, but that's not a reason to deny the application. And I would offer those um, findings. And so, um, Diane, are you able to make a motion? Sure. I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item number five. The decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth by the chair. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Uh, item seven, we were we going to adjourn that one. Yeah, that has to be renoticed. Okay. So that brings us to the last one, item number nine. <coughs> <coughs> On 91 Violet Avenue, um, the applicant is proposing a new deck to be located 10 feet from a side yard line requiring a variance of 10 feet. Does, does anyone have any concerns about this one? So, Christine, you had some concern, but those got your old? Me? No, yeah, no, that's okay. fine. Thank you. All right. Then let me offer these findings. Whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Um, the side lot. Um, is is kind of narrow, uh, but it's surrounded by um, a stockade fence and and some vegetation. It can't be really seen from the roadway. It's significantly far away from the from from Violet Avenue, and the prop the building proper blocks it from Chestnut. So um, I don't see it that there'll, there'll be any change in the character of the neighborhood. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Based upon the location of the house um, and on the property, this is the, they it would require an area variance to um, accommodate what the applicant wants to do. And whether the requested area variance is substantial, mathematically it, it, it certainly is, but based upon the location of the house and the side property line and the topography, um, it's, not, it's not substantial. And whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district do, do not appear to be any physical or environmental impacts from this application. And whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, um, it certainly was in the sense that there's his, his property is right, his building is right on the, on the for the side yard setback, so any, any encroachment requires a variance, but uh, that's not a reason to deny the application, and I would offer those findings. Sorry. Larry, oh sorry. <laughs> Larry, do you mind making a motion? 
and that was number six, uh, five, right? Number nine, the last one. Move the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item number nine. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, the results of site visits by board members, and the staff report. And the, and the, uh, sorry, the uh, chairman's findings. In approving this variance, the board adopts its in approving this variance, the board adopts its findings to the terminations of the chairman. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. Then all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Um, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, unless there's any other business, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? No. <laughs> All those in favor <laughs> signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Aye. All right, then that motion carries. Good night. Uh, we'll see you next month.